Hello, my name is Mark Aldrit, and I'm the developer of Scriptdebugger. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Scriptdebugger to learn an application scripting interface and use that information to create a simple AppleScript workflow. Along the way, I'll demonstrate several of Scriptdebugger's features. Let's begin by imagining I've received an email message from a colleague containing a template that I need to process into a final HTML file. We can begin by figuring out how to get this attached template from, e from mail. We'll start by launching Script Debugger and open Mail's dictionary. We start, we see the standard textual description of Mail's commands and objects. And there's also this view that lets you see the relationships amongst them. But we want to use the Explorer. The Explorer is a live, interactive view of Mail's scripting interface, and you can drill into objects. In this instance, mail has accounts, and then mail accounts have mailboxes. And uh, let's see, we can look at the inbox, and inbox has a series of messages. And I can drill in and actually see the attributes of a message. I can see its size, and the date it was sent and received, and the content, if I wish. But there's got to be a simpler way. Uh, so let's go back up here and look around. And we see that mail has a selection property. and we expand that message, there it is. This is the message that I want to process. And I can actually go and see that there is an attachment. So now that we have found the, the attachment, we need to figure out how to save it as a file. And there doesn't seem to be a file spec here. Uh, so let's go and look at the definition of this object so we can show its definition. And we see that, ah, it responds to the save command. So that's important. We'll go back to the Explorer. Now, these caution icons indicate that Script Debugger has encountered a problem getting this information from mail and has had to work, resort to, to workarounds in order to retrieve it. Uh, Script Debugger will let you see this by creating a working reference. So you can go copy reference, and then you can create a new script and we'll just pick a standard uh, template here. And then we can paste. And you'll see that uh, Script Debugger has created an entirely working uh, tell block. And the trick that Script Debugger used to get the information was to use an intermediate get to read the selection and then allowed the rest of the expression to operate on that. So if we run this, we see, ah, yes, we've received the attachment. Now, we also learned that we can save it. So we'll go save. We'll save this file. And we can run this script. And we see that the file appears on the desktop. Now. I happen to have a library of routines that make it easier to work with text files and strings. So we'll use, we'll bring that in. So I'm going to use, and I can pick the library that I want. And Script Debugger has filled in version information. So I compile. And uh, now let's read the contents of this file. So I can set. I don't remember the exact name of my handler, but oh, there it is, read from file. And you can see that it's created a call to that, ha that handler and provided me with a placeholder for the, the file specs. Now, my routine here is pretty smart, so I can actually just type and I can run that. Oop, I forgot to tell it which library to use. Okay, so now we've read the contents of the file, and you'll notice something here. This is rendering as, as HTML. Uh, the source of the file is available, and we can see this is what was sent to me. But in best view, it actually it recognizes that this is HTML text and renders it as, an, as a, a web view. Now, I need to 
process this. I need to replace these templates. So we can say set replace text. That's what I want. Spelling error, but let's leave that there for now. And we can change this to gotten partially there but as we as we see here this this one didn't change so we can turn on the debugger and we can actually step through this line by line and so in this variable now is holding the HTML we see it rendered and we step here and we go hmm no change so there's a problem and of course there's an issue so we can uh, stop the script go back correct the problem and step through again. And there we go, it's working correctly. Second one, and then finally, we can change. And you'll notice that this HTML view is constantly updating as you change the value of a variable inside your script. Now, let's save our HTML out to a file. Again, I have a routine to help me with this. And just to make sure everything worked correctly, let's open it in Safari and just make sure. Here's another feature. You can pick applications from menus. So again, we'll step through, get the attachment, we read it, process it, write it out to a file, and there it is in Safari. So as a final step, let's upload this to a server. And I was playing around with Panex Transmit for a while. And uh, let me see if I can find, if I type in Transmit, I can find anything on my system that talks to it. So there's my little experiment. We'll copy this code, paste it in. change where I want to put it. We'll just put it into the public directory. So, one last time. Let's we'll close all this. Writes the file, opens it in, in Safari. Now we we'll just uh, bring transmit up here so we can see what's going on and I upload it it's uploaded close the transmit window and finally if I go back to Safari and change this to there's our file up on the server so there you have it a demonstration of exploring mail, finding out how to get an attachment, using uh, command completion to use uh, handlers from a library, uh, viewing HTML data in directly inside Script Debugger, um, using pickers to choose applications, using Open Quickly to locate code you've already written to create a simple workflow. Thank you.